the JVC HRD870 on the bench again and uh, this video is going to be more along the mechanical aspects of this unit that we're not worried about. There's no electrical problems with this but what I want to do is I want to go through and uh, show you guys how to take a mechanism apart, how to align the, the mechanical timing and put it back together. And there are some issues with these chassis. Guide posts have a tendency to come loose and fall out so we're going to secure those back in place. But we're going to start by actually removing the chassis from the, so that we can work on the chassis separate from the rest of the unit. So to do that I have to take out a few screws here to lift the circuit board out and then we can lift out some retaining screws that actually hold the chassis in place. So let me just take out these arrow mark screws here and we'll get the board out of place then I can start working on the rest of it. I hope you can hear that noise in the background. That's my uh, The battery on my car is just finishing its charge cycle and it's now turned on the battery uh, cooling system I guess to cool down the uh, the battery a bit as it heats up as it's charging it's an electric car okay we're going to release a couple screws here so that we can remove the chassis and lift this whole unit out so that it can be worked on as a separate piece now in order to pull the chassis in addition to removing the one screw at the back here we also have to remove the four screws here that hold down the cassette assembly. The cassette assembly has to come out so if you've got a tape jammed in one of these you're going to have to get the tape out first. You can do that by once your once your loading mechanism is back you can actually turn the gear down here. Right? You can turn this gear down here to eject the tape. You push the gear back in that direction to get the tape out. We have to take out these four screws that hold the cassette basket in place and then we can because the reason we have to do that is because there's two more screws down in here that we have to remove in order to remove the chassis and as you can see from such a dumb design there's a bar the control bar that, that operates the tape mechanism is right across in front of these two screws here now you can see the mechanism a little better though before, before I even pull the mechanism out. Now we can see the mechanism. I have to pull out these last two screws and then the chassis will lift out and we can actually disconnect the connectors on it and work on the chassis out of the uh, rest of the machine. Just lift it up there. Just lift the entire chassis out just like that. We just have a couple connectors that we can undo. We can undo this green plug here for the loading motor. The head, we can unplug that. We can unplug this other connector for the drum. And these three connectors for the preamp. The erase head, and then to disconnect this other connector. So you lift up the tabs on the side here, and then that will unplug. Careful not to bend the wires. Now we have the mechanism separate. We can now tear this down. I can show you guys how this thing works, the complete operation of the mechanism. We'll just put the rest of the guts out of the way so that we can concentrate just on the mechanical assembly. First thing we'll look at is we'll look at the front loading mechanism here. The front loading mechanism on these units is pretty straightforward. It's just a mechanical arm that is connected as my screws that were in the chassis drop through. It's just a mechanical arm. It's connected from one side to the other. There's a gear down here and we've got two other gears. This one is driven by directly from, well I'll show you, there's another gear this meshes with on the side uh, of the mechanism uh, of the, of the uh, main cam. And basically when it's instructed to load the tape and unload the tape it engages through a little clutch assembly here and turns the mechanism or turns this gear which in turn loads the mechanism. There are a couple gears on this unit here that can break so let's take a look at we'll actually open this up and we'll take a look at this gear on the side here. I just want to get these screws out of the way before I lose them. four screws that hold the front loading mechanism in place. Okay, so if we want to take a look at this uh, loading gear assembly, we have to actually remove the top 
plate assembly, which is the screws on the top here. And there's one last screw over here on the side that holds everything together. Now we can lift off the top. And we can see our gear assembly here as follows. There, be, there will be timing marks on this too when it's in the unloaded position. So we have, the, we have the unit in the unloaded position now. We'll make note of the timing marks versus the loaded position which is when the mechanism is down. And fully loaded. So if we remove the gear here, you'll see that this is actually a cam gear and it actually controls the main loading gear here. There's another, there's a, a half gear assembly underneath here which is on this plastic arm and when the tape goes in you can see that that has teeth on it. That's what loads the tape down and when the tape is ejected it's all the way back. That has to line up with these teeth on this gear. There's also another cam assembly here, a little lever that goes into this cam that rides around on the inside of this uh, loading gear. So we have to make sure that we line that up. And there's a little hole right here that lines up there when it's, when it's in the unloaded position. That way it's in the correct position to line up with the uh, gear, the main cam gear. This one's just an idler gear, this one here, an intermediate gear. When we're lined up, everything will drop in place like that. And we can see the last tooth. If we look down through here, we can see the last tooth of this loading cam gear is lining up with the main loading gear on the assembly. And we'll be able to run it through its motions. If you're out of alignment, it won't work. So that's basically this portion of the mechanism. We're going to take this now and put this bracket back on just to hold the pieces in place because with it off things can fall apart quite easily. And it'll just drop in place just like that. And that little bracket goes back on top. Again, there's a little clip that goes on top here that just holds the mechanism in place. And it only goes in one way, so if you get it in the wrong slot, the screws won't line up over here. It has to go in the second slot over here, and then the screws will line up. The screw holes will line up. 
So now the mechanism is back together. As you can see, when I release the tape catches on either side here to unlock the tape, unlock the uh, mechanism, it will load down nice and smooth. Have to unlock the tape mechanism there to do that. And on eject, it'll come back up nice and smooth as well. This little circuit board here has a couple switches on it. that tell the microprocessor what's going on. So let's take a look at this little circuit board. I believe it's got some optical sensors on here if I'm not mistaken. It's been a while since I've looked at this. So we've got an optical, we've got we've got an optical sensor here and we have a, a phototransistor over here. Now the phototransistor on this side here, this is the tape end sensor when you're rewinding a tape. The infrared light that's sitting up on a little post in the middle of the tape it shines a light through the tape. And when the tape is being rewound, when that clear leader uh, passes and allows the light beam from the infrared LED to pass through, it'll shine on this phototransistor and that tells the machine to stop. What this one here is, this is a photo interrupter. And this is what's used to tell the machine when you put a tape in and when it should start loading. And how it works is when you push the tape in, you see that little lever here, right there. When the tape goes in, that little lever drops down like that, blocks the light shining between the, the phototransistor and the LED, which completes the circuit or signals the microprocessor that you've pushed a tape in and that turns on the motor to load the tape. What can happen on these is these can fail if the either the phototransistor fails or the LED fails and stops putting out a signal. Symptoms of this are the machine tries to load a tape by itself. You're sitting there and all of a sudden the machine turns on and like it's trying to load a tape but there's no tape being pushed in. If you get that symptom it's a, one of a couple things. It could be one of the solder connections on the back here has failed. If you got your, you put your scope to ground, or your meter, you'll you'll detect a voltage for the LED side, and the other side. If you if you there'll be no voltage on it, and if you were to block the light beam here, you would see a voltage come back because it, when the light is shining from one side to the other, it's going to turn the transistor on and ground out the uh, signal. So when the signal goes high, when you block the light, when the signal goes high, that's to tell the uh, unit that there's a tape trying to be loaded. Anyway, I've seen solder connections go bad, not too often on here, but I've seen them go bad and I've seen these trans photo transistors fail. And I've also seen these detectors fail as well. So just keep that in mind. If you've got a machine that is not working properly and it's trying to load a tape on its own and there's no tape going in, it could very well be that you've got a bad sensor here or a solder connection problem on that sensor. Enough about the front loading mechanism, let's look at uh, the rest of the mechanical system. So here's our, our basic deck. Everything's controlled from this one loading motor here and as the loading motor rotates you'll see that it turns this worm gear, turns this main cam gear which engages and pulls the tape out using two guides. One pulls the tape out to the half loaded position here on one side of the audio control head. The other, the other guide pulls the tape out and locks it in place on the other side of the pinch or the uh, capstan shaft. And then as it continues to load, you'll see what happens. The, the um, pinch roller starts to drop into place at the same time as the take up and supply side. Uh, they call the P2 and the P3 guide. The reason they call it the P2 and P3 is here's your P1 guide post, this is your back tension arm. This is your P2 guide post that threads the tape onto the entrance side of the tape drum. This is your P3 guide which threads the tape up onto the exit side of the tape drum. And P4 guide is this one here that pulls the tape out against the audio control head. And this is your P5 guide. So whenever you hear anybody talking about adjust your P2 and your P3 guides on a VHS machine, and it really doesn't matter which type of VHS machine, a P2 guide is always that one. That's always a P3 guide. 
as the tape continues to load you'll see here the pincher arm is now getting into position and this cam gear is now going to push the pinch arm up against the tape and that is entering the play mode now and if the if the motor was turning it would be taking up the tape and if you went into reverse it would go the other way so a little pendulum gear here that spins back and forth so now the tape is is loaded if the if the um, if the loading motor continues to load in the loading direction it will actually release I believe the pressure from the pinch roller which it does now to go into search now it's back on when I when I go through the motions here now it's released you can see this other little cam operation down here you know so this is the this is the back uh, back uh, the pressure release this cam so right now I can turn the pinch roller freely this is for like for example pause mode so it releases the tension from the pinch roller and then it will release this tension again this is this is the release cam that pulls the pinch roller away so you're in play or stop or your player record mode now and you want to go into reverse search for example it first releases the tension then it reverses the motor and then it puts the tension back on goes into reverse search and then the motor the loading motor reverses again it releases the tension momentarily the motor reverses speed like the uh, capstan motor goes back into forward mode and then it once again applies the, the tension the reason it does this instead of just reversing the direction of the motor is want to release the tension momentarily so that if there's any alignment problems the uh, tape can recenter otherwise you could manifest it and munch the tape on the pinch roller anyway that's fully loaded now to unload the tape the loading motor turns this direction this is a clockwise direction looking from the right side so it's going to turn this way clockwise and the mechanism unloads there we go this this un loads the uh, pinch roller now the pinch roller is going to rise up here it's hot today I'm, not, I'm losing my train of thought it's uh, quite warm today here in the workshop tape guides retract pinch roller lifts out of position the P4 and P5 guides both retract they're driven by the P4 guide is driven by teeth on the side of the cam gear here and the P5 guide is actually driven from the P4 guide as you can see if I turn it a bit here you'll probably see it better there's some teeth along here for both of these guides as it continues to unload it is now engaged and I don't know if you saw that happen but there's a there's a little catch here that now moved over this gear to engage this clutch which now transfers power over to the front loading mechanism to start turning the front loading gear so if you've got a machine that appears to be unloaded and, and your tape won't come out you can always turn this gear here to release the tape because it may be that the mechanism hasn't completely unloaded or this little catch is in that position and now it's going to freewheel this happens automatically if I go back and go through the mechanism go through the motions again you'll see when it does it I'll load the tape up I wasn't paying attention myself but we'll, we'll watch this this little white gear down here in this this, this cam this lever so the tapes loaded and now we want to hit the stop button and as the tape is unloading I'll 
I'll turn it over here so you guys can see what, how this works. As the tape unloads, when the tape approaches the fully unloaded position, this will be operated, this, this lever here, which is, which is operated from below, I'll show you a shot of that in a minute, but it's operated by the main slide cam underneath. As the guides fully retract, and the P4 and P5 guides start to retract back. Right now, at this point in time, you see this? Watch this gear, it's going to move. I'll turn this a little bit over so you can see it. So just as as the, the P4 and the P5 guides start to retract, you can see this is moving back and it's gonna lock in position. Now this little catch just locked. At this point in time, this gear here is transferring power over to this gear to start the rotation process of the main loading. So right now we're fully loaded like this. When this starts to rotate, this gear will actually start to rotate. It has quite a ways to go before it actually kicks the tape up. But as it continues to unload, now the tape is being ejected. And it will run until the photo detector on the front loading mechanism says, hey, stop. Of course, when we're timing one of these machines, we want to make sure that we run this back to the timing marks line up. And the timing marks are going to be little holes that are on the top of the machine here. And those little holes are right here. There's actually one over here. If I turn it back a bit, I'm past the stop point. We'll see when we're lined up. It might be tough to see. I'll see if I can get the camera zoomed in here a bit. When we're lined up, there's an alignment hole right here. And you can see through the chassis, you can see another metal hole in the chassis below there. You've also got another alignment hole here right here and that actually lines up with a hole below the chassis and then you've got this other little alignment hole here which which is now pointing towards this strut there's the tooth there this is so that you know that these gears are aligned up when that one is lined up with its timing mark below the chassis and when so I'm pointing at this one here when that one's lined up with this timing hole below the chassis, and that one's lined up with this timing hole below the chassis, and that little hole there is lined up with this little tab right there, then you know that this portion of the mechanism is in sync. That's correct. That's the correct position for the top side gears on this. So this would be the position that I would put the mechanism in when I'm going to put the loading mechanism in place with the tape fully ejected that is the correct position for that to work. Some common problems on the bottom of this chassis, what happens quite often on these is this little nylon gear here on top of the capstan motor has a tendency to crack. And then, and this happens on Mitsubishi's too, it's a really common problem on Mitsubishi's. The motor will spin but the pulley is slipping, the pulley won't turn. Now that hasn't cracked on this one, but that is quite a common problem. Quite often when it cracks, this, this will actually, the little plastic or nylon gear will fall off. That can be reaffixed with uh, epoxy. That's uh, simple to fix that. Uh, these tooth belts should never, ever fail. I've never seen one fail yet. Um, what I want to do is I want to pull this little circuit board off on here so I can show you the underworkings of this, this unit here. I guess I'm going to have to unsolder the, the mode switch here, which is what we showed you on the previous video where I where I cleaned the mode switch. But uh, to show you this, I'll have to unsolder a few things here to take the circuit board out. I don't know if I really need to do that or not though, because it's just, 
it, I guess to show you guys the proper alignment of this slide plate, I'm going to need to do that. So let me warm up my soldering iron and we'll just undo the mode switch and a couple of other things that have to come off in order to take this uh, board off. So we'll just uh, remove the solder from the switches here so that we can remove the circuit board. And now we should be able to remove the board. Oh, a little bit more here. Off this one, there we go. Okay, now we can lift the board out. Get that out of the way. Now pay attention on this board, there are more optical sensors on here. These are the same things, these are the rotation sensors. So if, if these sensors fail, the machine is gonna go into an emergency shutdown where it'll start to play for a few seconds and then stop. And the same thing is if the connections break on the bottom here, the unit will go into an emergency shutdown. These are static sensitive, so you wanna be careful when you're handling them. Okay, now that we've got the board out of place, we can take off the belt. That lets us access the main cam gear, slide cam. There are alignment holes on here as well. When the unit is in the stop position, you will see there's an alignment hole. I don't want to break anything here, got to be careful. That's a switch there, I don't want to break. There's an alignment hole right here, and it lines up with, you can see right through the chassis there, you can see the hole. So when it's in the fully stopped position, it is um, lining up here. This is the cam that actually operates this lever to engage the front loading mechanism. This little lever in here that when the tape is loaded, as it's retracting back, it's what activates the, the uh, mechanism here. If I were to, go, were to roll it forward here, as I'm doing now, As the slide cam comes back, it's going to catch. This, this is what pulls the clutch back here. This pulls this clutch back and engages the main gear for the front loading mechanism. And then as it continues to unspool, it will continue until it gets to where is it here? It's that position right there. When our when the holes are lined up here, we'll find that the switch on the bottom here, their V groups here are lined up. Well what we will do is we will remove this cut washer off of this clutch assembly here to show you what goes on underneath this unit. So there's a metal link here that, that fits down over top of this pin. That's what holds this in place and basically what this does is it, it's a, a torque limiting clutch. When it's down in the normal mode it allows slippage using the spring and the felt pad on the top. This limits the amount of current or amount of torque that gets sent to the take up and supply spools. To go into fast forward or rewind this lever here is activated by and you can see it here if I zoom the camera in a little closer. As the slide plate slides back and forth, it will lift this up. There's a little indentation here. 
it'll lift this up for fast forward or rewind and that in turn pushes this metal plate which is what's held in place with this index pin here it pushes it in place to engage the teeth here and transfer full torque in other words it bypasses the slip clutch to transfer full torque and then back into play mode you've got your slip clutch not a lot goes wrong with these things sometimes they get gummed up a bit and you got to take them apart and that's done by you can pop this gear assembly apart I'll show you how to do that so we just take a screwdriver and pop this assembly apart like that now this whole thing will come apart if you're not careful you'll have parts flying everywhere so you got to take it apart carefully okay um, what you want to lubricate on here is you want to lubricate this little brass ring here that's what slips on a clutch assembly. The clutch is this felt pad which is held in place by a spring. But what will happen is this will get gummed up and then you'll have way too much torque. Because once it starts to seize up you'll be transferring all the torque and the symptom for that is it's going to wrinkle the tape. We just use a good old uh, molly lube like the yellow grease I'm going to put on here just to show you how to do it. So we just take a bit of our molly coat, just a tad of this. You don't need much of this stuff. Just a just a dot of that stuff is all you need. Because it will as this rotates, it will lubricate. Okay, so now we take the clutch assembly and we put the clutch assembly back together into the main gear assembly like that. Now it can lubricate. And then we take the we have to put the clutch back together, so we take our clutch assembly and we put our, our top portion of our clutch back together. There's two springs in here, one inside the other, so it's best if you just leave it on your bench like that. And you can sandwich the whole thing back together. Now you got remember that this is going to be under tension, so you got to kind of work at this and don't let the springs get away from you otherwise uh, you could have springs flying across the room just push it back together and it will pop into place just like that now your clutch is back together and when it calls for the higher torque you can lift that piece up like that on the secondary spring that's why there's two springs one spring is to apply the tension on the on the clutch sandwich assembly and the other spring is to push the secondary clutch the, the high torque portion push it back out of the way that's how you lubricate the clutch another piece that you might want to lubricate on here is this gear here that can be lubricated as well. I'm not going to do it on this one, but and this post here, you would just use a bit of oil. In fact, we'll do we'll use some good old electric motor oil. I've got some kicking around here, so let's just grab a can of that stuff. Just one drop. Too much oil is worse than not enough. One drop on there. One drop on there. That's plenty. Put our assembly back on drop it in place like that and then we can put our cut washer back on so I guess I can illustrate you guys what's going on underneath here just to show you what goes on we'll just remove these two cut washers and we'll show you underneath the slide cam Okay, this just slips up out of the way. Of course, we have little springs and stuff that are going to pop out when we do this, but we've got to be kind of careful. There's the underside of the cam. And what we've got here, these are our loading gears that thread up the tape. 
We bring these back. We have to make sure we pull the P1 guide in here. Otherwise, they will stick. When they're all the way down, these two timing marks here will line up. There's one there and one there. And it's all the way down. Now what's very common on these units is these guides fall apart. Very, very common. These will actually pull right out without much effort. And they need to be glued back in place. And when I mean not much effort, you'll see I'm just going to hold the guide on the top there so it doesn't fall right through. But if I just, see what I mean? These come apart extremely easily. We want to cement those in place. We'll use crazy glue to make sure that they don't come apart again. So I'm going to scrap some crazy glue here. And what type of crazy glue am I going to use? Dollar Star Special. Good enough. Stuff's like three of these for a dollar at the dollar store. Or you can go and buy the one in the little green tube that says crazy glue on it and pay a lot more than that. Hold the guide in place. Remove the bottom of the guide. And put your little bit of crazy glue onto the thread, onto the, the little pin there. And while still holding it in your pliers, pull your guide back into place. And carefully, you don't have much time, you got one shot to do this basically. Put it in place. That'll hold that guide in place. We'll re rinse and repeat basically for the other side. Hold the guide in place. This one's probably loose too. Yeah, that one was. I do this all one one hand basically. Little drop of glue on the on the little pin there. It's sticking out. And then right back in place. That'll prevent those guides from coming apart. That's one of the things that happened on this machine on the first service of this the one where I did the power supply and then found that the guide pins had come undone and this capacitor had failed as well. You remember this machine if you look back a while you'll see it. Same machine. This time I'm just going through the mechanical part of the setup on this. Okay pull our P1 guide in, pull our guides back. We now can put our main cam back in place. Our main cam, this piece here, goes into the switch and the P1 is on this side. Don't make the mistake and put it in the side here or you're gonna have, like some people would put it in like that, no. You don't want to do that because you know what's going to happen when this tries to slide. It's going to break. This is this it, that this this guide here rides along the edge here, so it goes in place like that. And then you're going to put this groove here over top of here. It's going to clip in place. So in like that. You got to make sure you pull your guides back too. You got to. Otherwise, they will not line up. So we're going to pull the guides down this way. And then we have to lift this piece up out of the way. It's got to go on top. This little black, uh, this little black catch here has to go on top of this, so we have to kind of lift this up at the same time as we're putting the whole unit in place because it's got to go on the top side. It uh, it sounds tough to do, but it's actually not that difficult to do. And then we got to pull that out like that, so that this is on this top side here. And that will drop in place and then we just pull our guides back and it should just drop right in place here if I'm not mistaken. I gotta pull, I gotta pull the spring up like that too. Like that. This has to go, this little, there's a little catch here. And it rides on this little catch here rides on top of 
this little pin here. And now we are lined up. We're not quite lined up yet. I got to go back one a little bit like this. Like that. Not quite lined up yet. One more piece that's not quite in place over here. There, now it is. Now everything's dropped into place. I can now put my cut washer back on here. That one's in place. And the other cut washer here goes on here like that. And all these little levers are lined up. There's an alignment, there's an alignment hole right here, which you can see through the chassis, so you know your timing is correct. Uh, the V groove here on the switch, you'll see the two little grooves here lined up here on the switch. So that shows that the uh, mode switch is in the correct position, and this is able to lift this up and down. If you get this trapped on the bottom side, you won't be able to lift this up. But it won't go together if you do that anyway so now we can put the uh, clutch assembly back on make sure you get the little hole through here lined up with that alignment pin that holds it in position put on the cut washer Good thing you guys didn't see that. I licked my finger <laughs> in order to pick up the washer. Okay, that's back together. Now we can put our belt back on that drives the mechanism. And when we turn the belt, we should have, or turn the pulley, we should have both the take up and supply reel should turn. If we want to lubricate this top gear, which I'm not going to do, and then I'll do it just because I said I wouldn't, uh, we just take out these two screws here. But I don't need to on this one. It's, there's nothing wrong with this one. It can get gummed up, right? This can get gummed up here, but in this case, it's not. So I'm not going to bother on well, this particular machine. Make sure that the loading gear here is it got pushed out of position so it's kind of put it back in place so that it rides in here so that it can control that lever because if this lever jumps out like that for example uh, it will not operate the it will not operate the cassette the front loading mechanism to eject the cassette but that's that's that pretty simple I did remove my cassette uh, record switch because I didn't want to break it so I got to put that back on but I'll do that after I get the circuit board remounted and uh, then we'll resolder everything so we'll turn it over here again Mount our circuit board. Retach our screws. You guys just want to see this thing work, right? So do I. Okay, now we'll just resolder our switches that we disconnected here. Our tape sensor here first. And then our mode encoder switch. And 
under our tape, erase, protection, switch. Okay, I think I've got everything resoldered here. Now we can start to reassemble the unit. When you know it, the switch I tried so hard not to break, I just mashed it. <laughs> Oops. So I gotta try and put that back together. That was the uh, record lockout switch. So I said it was because it kind of got broken. I turned the chassis over with it upside down and uh, damaged that switch. Not a big deal because I'm never going to be recording anything on this machine ever again. If this machine is actually even turned on for any reason, it'll just be to play a tape. But that's what that little switch is. That's the record lockout switch. So let's see if I can put it back together. Okay, continuing. Even though my kind of my switch is kind of a bit screwed here. Oops. Oh well, I don't care about that. As long as it plays back, right? Um, we'll take our our header here, our our uh, interconnect wire. The marker wire is the purple wire, which is number one, which is on this end here. And we just take that and line up all the the pins, all the wires, and just pop them into the respective holes on the connector and then push down the connector and that'll lock it in place and that's how that is done now we can take the mechanism we can drop the mechanism back into the chassis once the mechanism is dropped in place three screws hold the mechanism and hold the chassis into the base. Again, this is why this design is kind of silly because you got to actually take the cassette basket out. It would be much better design if you were able to do that without removing the cassette. Now we can reconnect our other connectors for the loading motor. Audio control head. Drum motor. Head amp three connectors for the, the head amp. One would be for hi-fi audio, one for video, and one for power and control. And our full erase head that completes the connectors. And now the front loading mechanism can go back into place. circuit board back in place. So now we'll just hook up a monitor here. Put, give the unit power. I haven't even attached the front, as you can see the front cable to it yet. But we'll just see, I'm going to lift it up on one side just so that the pulley doesn't drag. And when I put the tape in, there we go, it loads. Press the play button and it plays. There you go. So that's how you take apart one of these JVC mechanisms and put it back together. Um, and everything here works. I'm just going to eject it here. That's how you take apart the mechanism so everything works. If um, if the cassette sometimes sometimes if you get your your timing a little bit out on here, as long as you line up the timing marks down here, the hole lined up with the cassette all the way out. If you just drop the loading mechanism back in, it should be correctly timed. If it's not. It will reset itself if you can load a tape. If you can run the tape mechanism all the way to the end, it will generally reset itself. Sometimes if the mechanism appears to be jammed 
you can loosen off this one screw here this one screw down here which holds the cassette mechanism the cassette mechanism in place and then you can lift the corner up here enough to disengage the gear so that you can run the mechanism through its paces to reset the timing shouldn't have to be done didn't have to do it on this one as long as you start with the mechanism with the cassette compartment fully ejected all the way to the end and your timing marks correct here with the holes lined up with the hole in the chassis down there then everything should go back together and work without having to play around with it much now we just have to put the front panel back on this unit put the screws back in to hold the circuit board in place put the bottom and top on it I think that we've probably seen the last of this one for a while unless I can think of something else that may need to be uh, gone through on this machine I've pretty much done everything that uh, we need to show you on this particular chassis but going forward I'll revisit some of the other ones that I may have looked at in the past and I do have a couple of other units that I haven't shown you yet which I'll be digging out when I get time to go through and uh, We'll show you some of those. I've got some other Panasonics as well. Most of the uh, machines that I have here are either Panasonic, Hitachi, or JVC and Mitsubishi. Those are the most common machines that I have in my collection. I believe I have a Panasonic Z, a Z mechanism as well, which is one that I haven't uh, shown off before. The only reason why I haven't gone through that one is because that unit hasn't developed a problem yet. If it had broken down, we would have already seen it, but it hasn't had a problem yet. And uh, because it's one of the machines that I do use actively for um, tape transfers, until it actually faults, I'm not likely to take it out of service just to uh, tear it down. I may pull it out of service just to give you guys a work through and run through on the on the maintenance on it, but uh, I'm not going to do a full tear down and tear the mechanism all apart and put the mechanism all back together on a machine that is still functional. I do that on machines that are broken, as is this one, because the tape guides had come apart on this one. And the last time I showed this one, I was just doing the temporary just to get the thing working put the guide back together and this one this is the permanent fix where we put the super glue on the bases maybe we'll revisit this one maybe we'll do one for tape path alignment on one of these in fact I'm going to do one on tape path alignment but that'll be another video we'll catch you in the next one